again, while we're here on the second Sunday of Advent, Advent means coming, for those that don't know. It's the coming of Christ that we celebrate, and that's what the Advent is. The second Sunday is peace. 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 Right? Peace be unto you, some churches say, right? Amen. Amen. And unto you, right? The Advent, that journey, the theme is peace. Peace. In Luke chapter 2, we're going to start there, but we'll be all around. <laughs> Give you a moment to get there. Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 8. We see peace brought out in the word. It says, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. <laughs> but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Lord Jesus, as we look into your word today, as we celebrate your incarnation, your becoming the God who put on flesh the divinity who put on dirt to live among us, to walk among us, to show us the way to you, and then to very making the way that we could come to you. From the manger to the cross, Lord, you made a way. You were born with a purpose, O oh God. I pray, Lord Jesus, you would teach us about this peace that we heard about. Lord, that peace, Lord, may it rule and reign in our hearts, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The angels appeared to the shepherds. Fear not, I bring you great joy, tidings of great joy. Maybe some of you, and when you read the Christmas uh, verses, you hear the peanuts from the peanut special, you know, as they, as they read the Christmas story. Fear not, great joy, peace was the message. It says, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. They heralded his coming with joy and peace. You know, people have been trying to make their own peace for a long time. <laughs> Manufacture their own peace, their own joy. Materialism, right? <laughs> it's the culture's attempt to try and facilitate joy without the Lord. <laughs> Guess what? It doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't work. We have good-meaning people who try to keep peace at any cost. No matter what the aggregation is, aggravation, no matter what the cost is, they just want peace. Just keep it down. Just swallow it because we don't want to cause trouble. <laughs> there are Christians who call for peace and they just want peace. Let's just keep peace. Let's just keep unity. And they let God's divinity go out the window and they enthrone humanity. And that doesn't bring peace. Not at all. Only disappointment, emptiness, fear. 
So where is the peace and the joy that was heralded by those angels? We seek peace between nations. We're still praying for the Ukraine. We're still praying for Israel, right? All the and that's and there's many things, many discrepancies going on around the world, and we seek peace for them. We desire peace among people. We desire peace among nations, but there is no peace on earth. As I heard the bells on Christmas Day said, there is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong, mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. We'll have to add that to our repertoire tonight. <laughs> Jesus said in Matthew 10, verse 34, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have come not to bring peace, but a sword. <laughs> What did he mean by that? I thought he was supposed to bring peace to those on whom his favor rests. How does this match up with that, what the angel said? If we look at history, if we look at current events, <laughs> we look around the world, we see Christians suffering for the name of Christ. Persecuted church members and countries around the world where believers are still killed today for their faith in Christ. They're harassed abroad, mat martyred for the sake of the cross. We're called intolerant here. When we claim that Christ is the truth, they call that intolerance. We have no peace in this world. So how could Isaiah and the prophets of old write that he is the prince of peace? Zechariah 9.10 says he will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. Here we have him coming as king, proclaiming peace to the nations. But when is that going to happen? <laughs> when Christ returns, right? Yet where do we find that peace that the angels talked about? Our Messiah came with prophecies and proclamations by angels that he would bring us peace. So where is that peace? Where is that peace? At Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Christ, our Savior, the Prince of Peace. There's several important things that we need to realize about his peace. How to obtain it, right? How to draw near to him, how to sense that. Isaiah 9, verse 6 says, For unto us, unto us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Isaiah's prophecy, it unveils some of the titles that the Messiah will have. The one we'll focus on today is the Prince of Peace. The Prince. That peace isn't fleeting. It's not here one minute and gone the next. The peace of God endures. Amen. It's perfect. It's enduring for those who trust in God. My mother had a plaque in her bedroom. I have inherited that plaque, and it quotes... Isaiah 26, verse 3, and how precious that verse has been to me over the years. It says, you will keep him in perfect peace, whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. 
Amen. The King James says, because it's, our mind is stayed on you. Amen. Stayed on him. The New Living Translation says, you will keep him in perfect peace. All who trust in you. All whose thoughts are fixed on you. Amen. Imagine a pond or a lake, if you will, that is undisturbed. It's peaceful. There's not a ripple in it. It's just peaceful. Peaceful. The peace that Jesus offers, that tranquility, if you will, it remains undisturbed no matter what is going on in our lives. That peace of God is the foundation upon which we can stand. Amen? Amen. His peace undisturbed no matter what's going on oh pastor that sounds great but you don't know what's going on in my life <laughs> peace of god passes understanding how isaiah 26 3 it tells us we looked at it whose minds are steadfast whose mind is fixed stayed upon the lord all the craziness going on we fix our minds on jesus amen on him He'll calm that storm within us. He's able to calm the storm. Oh, yes, we know. <laughs> Jesus stood up in that boat and he said, peace, be still. But he's also able to still the hearts of his children who are stayed upon him, who are steadfast in him. Lord, I know that you're in control. I know, oh, Lord, that nothing's going to happen to me except it goes through your hand. And I know that you'll be with me through it all. Our minds can be steadfast, fixed on him, our thoughts. Amen? we got to take those other thoughts captive, right? Taking them captive so that our mind is fixed upon him. Jesus, the Prince of Peace helps us to remain calm. His peace is different than what the world gives. That's temporary. Tried this pill, tried this relationship, tried this, tried that. All temporary. <laughs> right? The peace that God offers, it remains. It's enduring. John 14, verse 25 and 27. Jesus is speaking. He says, all this I have spoken while still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Verse 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. My peace. He gives us his peace. His peace. Amen. His peace. The peace that he had even as he went to the cross for us. That peace, right? As a, a sheep to the slaughter, <laughs> the scriptures tell us, so he did not open his mouth. He was at peace doing the Father's will. His heart and mind were steadfast on his Father. His peace comes to us believers through the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Holy Spirit of God. He tells us what Jesus taught. He's the one that reminds us of the scriptures. Amen. When times of need, right? That work of the Holy Spirit, but we find peace through the Holy Spirit. Peace that comes in the security of a relationship with Jesus. Is he your savior? Is he your savior? Right? Then he's going to take care of you. He's going to take care of you. That's a security, right? That's a security that we have. Peace is based on that relationship that we have in faith, that Christ is our savior, right? Santa Claus is not going to bring you peace, I'm telling you. He's not. Don't even look for it under your tree. It's not going to be there. It comes through the Holy Spirit. 
Jesus is our peace, right? The world can't give you peace because they don't know that peace. They don't follow him. They don't know that peace. Jesus told us in John 16, verse 33, I'm going to read it to you. I didn't give it to Drew. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Our peace comes from Jesus, the precious Lamb of God. Amen? Amen. Jesus is our peace. We'll have trouble. He told us that. That's no surprise to you. (laughs) None of you gasp. We're going to have trouble? No, you know that you're familiar with sorrow. You're familiar with grief and loss and disappointment and disenchantment. You're used to those things. You know those things. Jesus warned, you're going to have those things. But I have overcome the world. I'm telling you this so that you'll have peace, so your hearts will be prepared. He will give us life, and we will find peace, peace that comes from that relationship with him, that peace. Has the things of the world, they have no, no authority over us, no power over us. We belong to the Lord, right? I think it's the psalm that says, I'm my beloved's and he is mine. <laughs> yeah, he's going to watch over us. Amen. Understanding that true peace. In Philippians 4, 7, it says this, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. (laughs) The New Living Translation says, Which exceeds anything we can understand. (laughs) When we're in those situations and people around us are all up in the air. (laughs) And yet we have a peace that doesn't make sense. Peace. Do you hear them? They said cancer. Do not you hear them? They said war. Do not you hear them? (laughs) Divorce. Do not you hear? Yeah, I heard. But God. But God. But God. That peace. That passes understanding. Peace that doesn't make sense we can have with that relationship with God. That relationship. True peace means more than the absence of conflict. Sure, everyone can be at peace when everything is wonderful. When the sun is shining down on us, like the song says, then we can be, oh, we're at peace. Everything is beautiful in its own way right we can all have peace then peace doesn't mean there won't be trouble (laughs) jesus told us there would be (laughs) we know there is from our experience but it passes human understanding it's past what we can understand it's a gift from god himself to his children amen peace peace Peace, even in the midst of chaos. Anybody have some chaos agents in their life? Peace overshadows it when we have that relationship with him. My peace I give you. (laughs) Not as the world, peace I give you. Even in the midst, like the sturdy lighthouse that stands through the beating of the waves. It stands strong and true because of its foundation. So Christ wants to be in our lives. A sturdy, steady security that we have in him. A lighthouse in the midst of a storm, there can be peace within our hearts because we know 
our God, but God. <laughs> but God, right? He's there. We find an anchor for our soul. Amen? Peace in our life's tempest, storms around us. We find that peace, a peace that guards our hearts <laughs> and our minds. The Bible says in the last days, men's heart will fail for fear. But the child of God, amen, we have that peace that guards our hearts and our minds. Amen. Peace is only found in Christ. I hope you know that this morning. Peace is found in him. Romans 5, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. We can stand in that faith and receive that peace. We have peace with one another. Ephesians 2, 1, um, 14, it says, for he himself is our peace. He's our peace. Amen. He's broken down every wall that separates us. Amen. He is our peace. Peace is the fruit, not only of believing, but of the fruit of obedience Amen. to him. Obedience, right? We're called to live by faith, and doing so brings us peace. In Isaiah 26, I'll read it to you, 3 and 4, says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever for the Lord, the Lord himself, amen? That's what it says, is the rock eternal. Amen. He is steadfast and true. We're called to worship God. We're called to worship him. I know I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here. You're here to worship him today. But those online, we need to worship him. Amen? Worship him to live in awe of him. Sometimes in the busyness, we forget how awesome our God is. <laughs> how awesome he is that he would leave his throne in glory and come and put on a dirt man suit like us, <laughs> made of the dust, <laughs> and walk among us. He's awesome to, to live as God would want us to live. We're called to refrain, refrain from evil and to do good. Psalms 34, 11 through 14 says, Come, my children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. We're to do good. We're to do the works of God. And to speak the words of God, we're to pursue peace, even in persecution. We can find God's peace. It's the fruit of our growing in Christ. That peace, that peace, it grows inside us. <laughs> Amen. As God renews us. Right? Matthew 5, 9 said, blessed are the peacemakers. Why? They will be called the children of of God, the sons of God, transforming peace, transforming peace. Romans 12, 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. We're not going to find peace in the world. Why would we conform to it to try and get that peace when we know that peace doesn't last? Poof, and it's gone. Right? The peace of God endures. The peace that the Prince of Peace offers us isn't just passive. It's not here today, gone tomorrow. No, his peace is there. 
Do we feel it every day? No, because honestly, we don't seek it. Seek peace. Seek peace. Stay connected, right? We're going to go there in January. <laughs> John 15, being connected to the vine, right? We need to be connected to feel that peace. That peace is going to transform us. It reshapes our thinking. Sometimes we don't even realize the effect that the world has had on us. We think like they do way too often, right? But God wants to reshape our thinking. He aligns it to God's will and to the word of God. It brings renewal in us and our inner selves when we allow God to have his way in our hearts and our lives. Navigating the storms of life. Psalms 29, 11 says the Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. With peace. Are you his child today? He offers you peace. Come, come, right? Come, come to him and receive that peace. Life's storms are inevitable, but the prince of peace promises strength and peace in the midst of them. We're anchored in Christ. James 3, 17 and 18 says, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, and then it's peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace will reap a harvest of righteousness. The peace of Christ. It not only sustains us in trials, but it also influences our responses. It transforms us into peacemakers. A soft answer turns away wrath. It should transform us so that not only we feel that peace, but we pass on that peace to others. Prophet Jeremiah in verse 6, in chapter 6, verse 14, he's talking about the rulers of the world, and he says they say, peace, peace, but there is no peace. <laughs> we feel that in the world around us, don't we? We feel that. People are like, oh, God is love, and he won't punish. <laughs> Be at peace. Don't worry. We have good men in authority. The world doesn't have the peace that we need. <laughs> peace, peace, they say, but there is no peace. There is no peace. Jesus, what did he mean when he said, I did not, don't suppose I came to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. Why would Jesus say that? He's asking us to pick sides. Pick sides. Are you going to be with me or the world? Right? He wants us to choose. Right? <laughs> Society was... Not supportive of Jesus. In fact, they hated him. They killed him. They're not going to be supportive of us either. Intolerance. Why? Our very lives convict those around us. As we grow in God and we become more like him, we allow him to renew us and reshape us and then we go to where we used to go, maybe to school or to work or whatever, and all of a sudden, the lives that we live bring conviction upon their sin. We're to be salt. <laughs> We're to be light. We're to be bearers of the truth. Right? We see that throughout the scriptures. We see it throughout history. Herod beheaded John the Baptist, right? The Jewish leaders crucified Christ. 
right? We see that Peter and Paul, they were executed, right? And so we know that but we're to be salt and light and that peace can still dwell within our hearts. We're to help others find the same peace, the same peace that we've been given. Acts 10, 36, you know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord over all. The gospel of peace. We're having our feet shod with the gospel of peace, right? Peace with God through the atoning work of Christ, that Christ died on the cross for us. We're to proclaim that message to the world who are desperately searching for peace, and they can't find it not on their own. We're to remind them there is no peace without Christ. To know peace, we have to know, K-N-O-W, Jesus. Without him, there's no N-O, peace, <laughs> right? No peace without him. Isaiah 48, 22 says, there is no peace, said the Lord, for the wicked. Peace comes only as we surrender ourselves to the Lord. As we surrender ourselves to him. As we celebrate Christmas, we read the familiar stories. We sing the familiar Christmas carols of peace on earth and joy on earth. Amid all that the world calls for war and violence. And yet we sing, we need to reflect on our peace our peace that we have in him. <laughs> to seek the peace that passes understanding. The peace that just doesn't make sense. People scratch their head and look at us. What's wrong with that person? <laughs> Don't they get the news, right? <laughs> yeah. The peace that comes from the Prince of Peace. We need to look expectingly to him that we'll have that peace. When Christ returns again, he will establish a peaceful kingdom. And the lion will lay down with the lamb, as is told in Isaiah 11. Extending that peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, Matthew 5 says, for they will be called the children of God. We're not called to just experience this peace. Oh, it's wonderful. If it was a God bless me club, right? Oh, this is wonderful. You feel that peace? Oh, yeah, I feel that peace. Yeah. No, it's not just for us. We're to share that peace and demonstrate that peace. In the midst of trial, as Brother Michael said, in the midst of a far off the road experience. <laughs> What comes out? We need to demonstrate that peace. Thank you, Jesus. You spared my life once again. Thank you, Lord. Right? That we demonstrate that peace by sharing the gospel and by living our lives before them. They should reflect the peaceful nature of our Heavenly Father. I've said it before when all these wars and tragedies happen. God doesn't jump up off the throne and wring his hands. He's at peace. So he wants to bestow that peace upon his children, upon those that are connected to him. We saw the peaceful pond before with not a ripple. But what if we made a ripple where we are? What if we made a ripple where we are telling the good news, the peace of the gospel? Have you been to a pond and you throw a pebble in and it just spreads and spreads and spreads? And what if each one of us in this place would begin to throw our pebble of peace at the world around us? Imagine 
the circles, the circles, the circles, the circles, all that we would touch and influence by the peace of the Prince of Peace that he's given to us that we would share with others. And it would spread and it would spread and it would spread. That's what we need to be. <laughs> Pebbles of peace in a world of conflict. May the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, not only guard our hearts and our minds, but propel us to be ambassadors of the gospel of peace. Things are crazy in your life. I understand that. I have trouble too. But I know a source of peace, a calm that you can tap into that is there night and day for you to tap into. Be ambassadors of peace, tossing those pebbles of peace. Amen? Transforming unshakable peace around us. The prince of peace. Not just to rest beside this, the weary road, as another Christmas carol says, but to have it endure in our hearts and in our lives. The peace of God. Where is the peace of God? Near to the heart of God. Drawing near to him, drawing upon that peace. Lord, I need your peace. If you need peace in your heart today, I want you to stand. Just for a moment, we're going to prepare for communion shortly. But I want us to stand for a moment. Sometimes we need to tell God, Lord, I need your peace. I told God that just this morning in prayer. Lord, I need your peace. It's easy to get all caught up. <laughs> Lord, I need your peace. So as you stand, you're saying, Lord, I need your peace. Lord Jesus, as we think about the peace that you offer, we pray, oh God, that your, pre your peace <laughs> that goes beyond our understanding will guard our hearts and our minds during this season. Lord, as we draw near to you, we know you will draw near to us, and you are the Prince of Peace. We pray that peace would rub off on us. Lord, that it would take root in us and it would grow and bring forth fruit. And Lord, that we would be messengers of the gospel of peace in our world, we pray. Lord, help us in all we do to share you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we continue and go to communion.